Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. How can uh, how can one avoid being overwhelmed by injustices all around? Subhanallah. Uh, this is a, a very pertinent question for the time that we find ourselves in at present. Um, for those watching live, uh, this is of course in reference, and I think you'd immediately get a sense of that, to the genocide that's currently uh, still taking place um, in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate the difficult situation in the injustice and in the oppression and liberate our brothers and sisters around the world who are suffering under oppression. Um, and at times such as this, it's easy to become overwhelmed. For those not watching live, of course, this is in reference to the incidents that initially uh, were highlighted once again, I should say, on the 7th of October in uh, 2023. It's now uh, 2024, more than halfway through the year. And it's still taking place, subhanAllah. So at times such as this, one feels a sense of being overwhelmed because of all the injustice. And generally when one feels the sense of injustice, it is a sense of a number of things culminating into a feeling that's almost too difficult to give expression to. And when evil, when a believer witnesses evil, sees evil, uh, comes into contact with evil, it must affect the believer because the believer has iman so that iman is uh, it necessitates that the believer responds to the oppression or to the injustice from various perspectives as well uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the ummah of believers they are like one body and when one limb complains of a pain or of an ailment or of a fever it's not like the rest of the body can just relax and say, well, it's not happening to me, so I'm okay. The rest of the body feels the pain as well. If somebody has, may Allah grant us afia, if somebody has um, cancer in their toe, for example, and uh, their toe is aching, but the rest of their body has no pain, it's not like they can just ignore the toe and carry on. So that's like this ummah. So it's natural to feel a sense of pain. It's natural to feel the difficulty that the ummah faces. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means for us to not just feel those feelings, but for those feelings to translate into action so that we can make a difference and we can make a difference. And this is, uh, I think, where we can manage the feelings that we speak of. Such feelings that we have in our heart, it's not something that we should get rid of or wish away, as painful as it is. It's a sign of Iman. It's a sign that faith is alive in our hearts. And that pain allows us to, to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It draws us to a point of helplessness. It draws us to a point of realization that we can only but rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, it's, that's exactly what it's meant to do. If we ignore the pain and if we pretend as though it's not there, as if everything is okay and we'll, we'll just carry on with, with life as per normal. This is not productive, nor is it, is it justified. This is a, a, a cowardice act. Um, they call it an ostrich mentality, but it's actually a myth because uh, ostriches don't actually do this. So it's, it's worse than an ostrich mentality, in fact. Um, it doesn't resolve anything. And to, to sort of languish in the pain and in the suffering, and to just become depressed and broken by it is also not productive. And it's also not the way of the believer. The Prophet wasallam he gave us various instructions in relation to this. He said, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Be eager for that which is beneficial for you. Wasta'in billah. Take the assistance of Allah. Wala ta'ajiz. And don't become helpless, uh, hopeless. Don't you know give up and become weak. Um, Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the, you know, the precursor to what I'd like to say about that. A genocide is undoubtedly a reason to feel feelings of emotional pain. Don't try and chase away the pain. Welcome the pain. It is a blessing and a sign of one's faith. Don't languish in the pain. Don't suffer in the pain and just dwell therein. Uh, without doing anything about it, because that's not healthy for one's faith either. Instead, do what is within your power, right? Take the feeling 
and allow the feeling to translate into action for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu he gave us instructions for this as well. He said, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ he says, whosoever sees injustice, harm, wrongdoing, oppression, a crime, let them change it physically. Whatever they can physically do to change the situation, let them change it physically. So take action. Where you are, you may not be in a physical battle on, uh, you know, in, in the warfare sense. But war has many colors and many shades, right? The ideological battle is probably the most important battle in this regard. This oppression, this genocide is fueled by hatred, it's fueled by Islamophobia, it's fueled by colonialism, it's fueled by racism, it's fueled by sheer evil. So on the ide ideological front, we require soldiers with, with uh, intellect powered by faith. Intellect powered by faith inspired to bring justice and to fight against injustice. So we need that. That's, that's something that this ummah requires and it's something that, that uh, you know, the more soldiers we have fighting this ideological battle, the better it is for not only those suffering at present, but for all of those who suffered before and all of those who will suffer in the future. This battle of supremacy and racial superiority and the like is a battle that started when shaitan said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ana khayru minhu, I am better than him. Referring to Nabi Adam alayhi salatu wasalam as a justification for why he disobeyed Allah. And if shaitan can, you know, reach to the point of disobeying Allah in front of Allah because of this sense of superiority, the sense of arrogance, then you can only imagine the destructive power that arrogance has among human beings. Subhanallah. So, that feeling should drive you to action. And if you cannot do something physically, if you cannot physically become a soldier against the ideological or within the ide ideological battle or within spreading, you know, information as opposed to disinformation and in terms of spreading knowledge, you know, true and reliable knowledge, then you can also do something by speaking out against it. And for me, the most sterling example of an efficacious battle that has rung out um, since the 7th of October has been the social media front. And as a result of social media, just people sharing and liking and commenting, you know, on, on posts that are enlightening, that bring about awareness, uh, such actions, they are appreciated and they are, they really work. Right? We've, seen, uh, we've seen the tremendous impact of social media on various platforms and in various formats across the world, alhamdulillah, to the point where this fight against oppression, this fight against uh, apartheid and racism has now you know, taken on a new form. It's no longer you know, predominantly Muslims in the forefront of this battlefield. It should be because it's, you know, it's closest to us. But it's now a universal, alhamdulillah, it's a universal fight, a humanitarian fight. It will always remain to us part of our Islam and it's a matter of aqeedah. But inshallah with this, uh, the last thing that we would say is if you cannot even say something, you cannot even share something for whatever reason, I don't think anyone really has an excuse. Uh, some people still claim that they're worried about what their friends may think or what their workplace may say and so on. There may be genuine considerations in that regard. But if you cannot even do that, then for the very least, what does the Prophet ﷺ say? فَبِقَلْبِ With their hearts. And many have interpreted this to mean to feel that pain in your heart. It's part of faith, even though وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ That's the weakest form of faith. So we shouldn't just hang about and say, well, I feel for them, I feel for them, I feel for them, being satisfied with the lowest level of our faith response in this regard. No, we should try to elevate ourselves and to speak out against it where possible and to take action where possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'lam.